This is bad. What? Cue all the comments of uh, siblings are dating. Thank you. Hello, my peeps. Welcome back to the channel and happy new year. No, it didn't go. All right, try it again. I, I, I know the pressure. Now. It's on the pressure. Welcome back to the channel and happy. That was early. <laughs> Damn it. I fucked it up. That's all right, thank you. But, uh, just like last year, I figured it would be very fun to try to delve through the internet, different social medias, and try to find some of the best, most tasty, and delicious looking New Year's Eve cocktails and appetizers. And on the menu for the very last video of the year will be this lemon ball drop cocktail, as well as the famous butter candle that's gone viral recently. Some super simple restaurant quality crock pot queso, and then for desserts, to round everything off, some candy coat grapes. And considering that I probably won't be out on New Year's Eve, just like the rest of my life, I figured I'd make this into a little New Year's Eve party in and of itself and have a certain someone come and confirm all my findings with these. Come on in. My boyfriend Steven will be here testing out everything else with me. And do you know what I say at the end before we start cooking? And let's get right into this one. You knew it. Good job. Oh, yeah. First up today, as I mentioned, we are going to be trying out this very cleverly named lemon ball drop cocktail from VXLedW over on TikTok. And you will need some triple sec and water, some tequila and edible glitter, as well as some sugar and a couple of lemons. Correct me if I'm wrong, but usually with the lemon drop, whether that is in cocktail form or shots, I think it's made with vodka, at least in my experience anyway, so I was a little bit surprised to see this one made with tequila. But besides that, pretty much everything is gonna be pretty standard here. You're gonna make a very quick, simple syrup with equal parts of water and sugar. Let that come to a simmer over a low heat until all that sugar is dissolved, and then just juice some lemons. Obviously, due to the nature of this drink, we need a lot more lemon juice than you might imagine. I'm gonna use pretty much all the juice of two lemons because the final concoction is going to be equal parts of the tequila triple sec and lemon juice a little splashing of our simple syrup and then god knows how much edible glitter which i've gone on this rant before so i will spare you what the hell is edible glitter everything in my body in my fight or flight mode is telling me not to consume this stuff and i remember a bunch of you commented that i was being dramatic because you're not really able to smell or even taste edible glitter but i swear there is some texture with this stuff. It does make things look very pretty, especially this drink, so let's just give it a shot. This guy's sitting people behind come, the camera people come to my, waiting. My story to get previewed. I understand, all right. I'll pretend you're not there. He's standing behind the camera like this with his phone just filming me. Lovely. Mm. This is good. I still ask why tequila over vodka though. I think if I were to remake it, I would definitely swap them out. But overall, it's a very nice balance of the tart and sweet. Obviously the strength of the liquors in there. Well, not yet. Sit down and try it. Ooh, what's in there? And the secondary review. Is that tequila? Yeah. I hate tequila. Well, that's a problem. How would you rate it out of 10? Go. I used to do this. They'll probably love this. Is there glitter in here? Yes. Be pooping glitter. <laughs> so I'm going to rate it a 6. I could still drink it. I don't like tequila. And I could still finish this. So that tells you something. All right. Stamp of approval. Next up on the itinerary, we've got this ultra viral butter candle in a bread loaf from Ain't Too Proud to Meg. I gathered together some AP flour and olive oil, some whole wheat flour and salt, warm water, instant yeast, lots of butter, fresh garlic, and salt and pepper. As tempted as I am to just buy myself a store-bought sourdough or country loaf and save myself a whole lot of time and patience, I figured why not revisit a recipe from a couple weeks back that came out great and make our own loaf of bread. This homemade country loaf from Cafe Haley is one of the easiest and most delicious bread recipes I have ever made. I cannot recommend it enough if you are a beginner in bread making or just want to try this out. It requires no kneading whatsoever and usually a minimal amount of rising and prep time, but for this one, I wanted to take it up a little bit and stick this bad boy in the fridge to proof overnight to get some of that delicious fermenty flavor going. Also, the night before, I roasted up some garlic, melted some butter, and then combined those in a cup with an old candle wick that I found. 
to make said viral butter candle. If you haven't seen this, I will ask you, have you been living under a rock? It's been everywhere, pretty much, and every single time I've seen it, I have asked the questions, are candle wicks and the subsequent burning of them safe to be touching food? Especially when you're like me and you've ripped them out of an old scented candle, probably from the 90s, from your mother's cabinet. I'm sure all of you have eaten a little bit of candle wax that dripped onto your birthday cake anyways over the years, so maybe it'll be fine. But back over to our bread. When I pulled this out of the fridge, this looked like shit. This is the wettest bread dough I've ever seen in my entire life. It resembles more of a pancake batter than a bread dough. I'm not sure if that was a result of the overnight proof or just uh, incorrect measuring on my end. But to be frank with you, I don't feel like doing this again and I'm running low on time anyway, so I'm gonna try to bake this off and just see what we end up with. I tried to just flip it onto some parchment to be able to plop it down in our preheated Dutch oven because you can barely touch the damn thing, it's so soft. Now when I pulled this out of the oven, it smelled really good and the top looks a little bit interesting. The smooth, glossy finish on this looks nothing like any of Haley's breads, but when I let this cool down for a little while to let that crumb rest up and then cut into it, it felt a little bit tacky. I would probably guess that something went wrong at some point during this, but we're just gonna run with this guy because it is what we have. I unfurled my butter candle. Didn't really work either, to be honest. The roasted garlic and the butter separated. Uh, unfortunately, we'll have to leave this behind. But all in all, I can't complain too much because when you match these guys up together, it doesn't look half bad. So let's give it a taste. So as I expected, we lost the flame as I was walking down here. I think once so much butter melts, it kind of puts itself out. But we have a solution. Don't you worry, we're good. And we lost it again, but oh well, it did its job for now. This is delicious. I do not understand the hate around this. It's literally just bread and butter. Although if the candle keeps going out, I will say that's annoying. I will keep you updated as I'm eating this. And the bread is a slightly strange texture, as you probably imagined. But the flavor of this is very good, and surprisingly the crumb came out pretty good too. It's a little tackier than you would expect, but the sourdough flavor is right there. Oh shit. Select your piece of bread. This is homemade bread, sourdough, fermented overnight in the fridge. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, toasting the bread. <laughs> Don't seem impressed. No. <sighs> this thing is... It keeps going out. It tastes like the tastes like candle. <laughs> like, it tastes like flame. Well, you just held the bread over the candle wick and toasted it. I think it's great. I can't taste butane. I can taste the butane, just like that uh, cooked salmon roll. I think the main issue is that the butter melts way too fast for the wick, so the wick like can't keep up and just let's keeps getting a, drowned. Let's use a lighter. Once it gets going, it's it's great, but I feel like it just it's not sustainable. I feel you should let it go, let it go out. Not happening. Now you have your melted butter, because it's kind of hard if it. Okay, but if you're at a party, you're gonna come back and relight it every two minutes? No. It's impractical. Overall, taste is great, a very cool concept, but until somebody can figure out how to keep that thing lit and not constantly smothered by uh, the butter liquids, maybe not the most practical thing in the world. I agree. Third on today's to-do list is the one I'm probably most excited for, and it is the Crock-Pot Queso from the user Nicole M. Strickland over on TikTok. And this will be a very simple combination of some tortilla chips and pepper jack cheese, white American cheese and evaporated milk, a fresh jalapeno, and some salt and pepper. Now why did I select this recipe to redo? Besides the fact that it has 4 million views on TikTok, of course. But the larger reason is because of how simple this thing is. Once you dice up your pepper, you literally just throw that in a crock pot with your two cheeses, the milk, and then let it heat up together. There's no roux happening here. There's no fiddling around with a saucepan over on your oven. This is as easy of a cheese sauce as you will ever see. So if this thing comes out as smooth and grainyless, green, grainless, grainyless, is that a, neither one of those are worse. You guys know what I mean. If it comes out really good, I will be a little bit shocked, but very happy. Now this does take between 90 minutes and two hours on the high setting of your crock pot, so it requires a little bit of planning, but again, you can't complain. The texture of this looks great, and the final plate with the chips looks awesome too, so let's give this one a try. It 
So this isn't bad by any means. It is a very cheesy and slightly spicy queso, but obviously the overwhelming flavor is just American cheese and the kind of coating that it gives to your mouth. I wish there was a lot more peppers to cut the richness of the cheese, and my number one complaint when making cheese sauces like this is that gross kind of skin it gets on top. If you give this like 30 seconds to a minute without touching it, it develops this skin on top that is not the most pleasant. Oh, you got the bread. That's smart. It's a very good thickness. Mm. I will say that. Not too stringy. Not too liquid. Very good. Mm. That's one of the best quesos I've ever had. Really? Uh-huh. I can always do more spice. I give it a... 8 out of 10. Wow. Yeah. There you have it. I can eat the whole bowl. I'm gonna force feed you lactate though. I'm not dealing with this later. <laughs> and lastly today, we are revisiting the candy coated fruit, previously known as Tonghulu. But today, according to Yardin Joseph over on TikTok, we're gonna be testing out the Jolly Rancher candy coated grapes. And this one requires some green grapes, some Jolly Ranchers, and nerds. And that is it. Funny enough, this one probably takes twice the amount of active manual work as the last recipe. Even though it's just a melted down Jolly Rancher on a grape, that's how simple that last queso was. But the prep starts with removing your grapes and then patting them dry with some paper towels. That is very important to get the candy to stick to them. And then of course impaling each and every one with either a chopstick, a skewer, in my case a toothpick. Probably the least safe of the three options because we are going to be dealing with molten hot sugar. And then I just put those over to the side while I separated my four colors of Jolly Ranchers and then melted them down in the microwave. So one by one, I dipped my grapes down into my melted Jolly Ranchers and then tried to dip them in the Nerds. I don't know if my candy wasn't hot enough, if I was taking too long during this process, but the Nerds were not cooperating. They were not sticking to the grapes that well. And honestly, I think they look a little bit cooler and cleaner without them anyway, so I did half and half. And yeah, these were looking pretty decent. I'd say even a little bit better than the last time I tried Tonghulu. So let's give our fourth and final course today a shot. Okay, for the last one, we are gonna try them both at the same time. I figured that would be good on this beautiful bouquet uh, paper cup. Cheers, let's see. Oh, yeah, watch your teeth. That's really good. It's interesting. The Jolly Ranchin, although you do have to be careful, is thin enough to where you kind of can crunch through it. I said this in the aquarium cookies. You wouldn't think that Jolly Rancher in any form would be chewable. Once you get it this thin, like he said, it is um, relatively safe. Once again, my biggest complaint is still the warm fruit, in this case, grapes. It is very weird. I don't love fruit when it's warm and that super hot sugar just heats this up like crazy. I really liked it. I would rate it a seven and a half out of 10. Above average? Above average, yeah, just above I average. would agree. Overall, very successful. I never thought I'd be on a YouTube. On a YouTube? Why do you talk like a geriatric, like, grandmother who doesn't know the internet? On the YouTubes. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave us a big thumbs up. Happy New Year to all of you who are seeing this before or right around New Year's. If you would like to see Steven more on the channel, let us know down in the comments. Or if you hate him and never want to see his face again. I actually don't say that. It'll hurt my feelings more than his. I've been bullied enough in middle school. <laughs> Don't hurt me no more. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend. I hope to see you right back here next time. Peace. my life with my 18 yeah our style wasn't wavy but we had a vision oh are we at this part yet no no that'll ruin the continuity uh -oh. so that's supposed to be we haven't tried that yet according to them okay tell the world i've i have cheesy farts yo I'm telling you a little late but try to look in the camera when you're filming not in the viewfinder it's a big mm. mistake new youtubers make I was wrong. I was looking at this thing the whole time. You didn't catch that? No. You gotta look at the people.
Look in their souls. Mm. I was checking myself out. Okay, buddy. 